Today, I'm gonna to show you how easy it is to use Sublimation Ink to create your own quilt labels that is a snap to put together. Here's what you're gonna need. You'll need a Cricut machine, infusible ink pens or sublimation inks, heat transfer tape, butcher paper, a heat press, cardstock, a pressing surface, and a high polyester count fabric. So now that you know what you need, let's go ahead and get started by creating our label in Cricut Design Space. Okay, I've opened up a new project here in Cricut Design Space, and now I want to go ahead and insert a shape. So I'm gonna click on shapes, and I'm going to click on the square. Remember that even if you do not have a Cricut Access account, you can use the shapes for free that are listed as free. And the square is always free, so you can use that. So I went ahead and put a square onto my canvas. I wanna change it to white, so that way whenever we put the text on it, we'll be able to see it a little more easily. And I'm also gonna size it down. It's pretty close, but I wanna go ahead and size it to 6.5, because remember, the template that I'm going to use to cut out my fabric with is a six and a half inch square, and so I'm gonna use that. I'm also gonna rotate it at 45 degrees, so that way we have the corner sticking out. Whenever I put these labels onto my quilts, I like to sew them into the binding in the corner, so that way I have to do as little hand sewing as possible. So I am going to be using this square shape and folding it in half and putting it um, into the binding whenever I sew the binding on, which makes the process a little easier for me. And remember, whenever we create our text for this shape, we're gonna wanna fit it here on the lower half of the triangle because the other half will be folded over and in the backside of the label, which is not gonna be able to be seen. So we're gonna use the bottom half and also remember that when I sew this into my binding, I'm gonna be sewing a quarter of an inch. So I need to make sure to stay about a quarter inch away from the edges of my shape here. So let's go ahead and get some text and put that on. So I'm going to put name of the quilt. It was created by me. And I'm gonna put the year. And whenever we want this to actually be created, we don't want this to cut. Right now it's set as a basic cut. If you go up to operation, you'll see basic cut. I don't want it to cut out of the paper. I actually want this to draw. So I'm gonna change this to a pin, and then I'm gonna change this to, let's see, it's usually under marker if I remember correctly. Let's see if we can find, yep, there's the infusible inks. So I'm just gonna go ahead and set this to a black infusible ink, but remember you can set it to whatever. It's all about what pin you actually put into the machine, but just as a way to help me remember, I like to set it to an infusible ink. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that. I'm also going to change the style from regular to writing. I want this to write, and I want it to look more write, like writing instead of bubble letters. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the size of this until I get it about the size that I want. Remember, we're staying under that halfway mark because that's about where the uh, folded edge is going to be. And we can also use our alignment tools to align it to the center of the object. So I'm gonna center horizontally. And actually I wasn't too far off where it moved before I could look down there. Looks pretty good. We're about a quarter of an inch away from the edges. We probably can move it down just another hair. Maybe something like that. That looks pretty close. And if I wanted to, I could adjust it and like shrink the size down a little bit more. That may be a little too small, but it's, it's completely up to your preferences and what you want. So again, I'm gonna align it really quickly just to make sure that I have everything aligned. There we go. So it's now centered. It's below that little um, plus, oops, that little mark in the center showed, this little plus sign here in the center showed that my object is below the halfway mark, so I think I should be good and I won't have to worry about it getting folded over to the back side. This all looks pretty good. I like the way that everything's looking. Remember, our square is at 6.5, at least for what I create my labels at. You can, of course, do whatever size label that you want. 
So that all looks really good. I'm gonna go ahead and click and hold and drag and I wanna select both the square and my text and I'm gonna come down here and click attach. I've now attached my text to that square and whenever I cut it out, it will make sure to uh, basically write on that square Okay, now that I've gotten my label the way that I want it and I'm ready to send it over to my Cricut machine to actually make it, I'm gonna click on make it. And of course brings up this page and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and adjust it since I have an eight and a half uh, by 11 piece of paper. I'm just gonna go ahead and rotate it so that way I can move it up into the corner of that piece of paper without wasting too much of it. And something super important that I want to do is make sure to mirror. I want to mirror so that way when I put this piece of paper down on top of my material, the ink will be touching the material and it will infuse to that material and look correct whenever you go to read it. So always make sure to turn the mirror on whenever you're actually cutting this out and so that way it can be red and isn't backwards. I can't tell you how many times I've accidentally made that mistake of not mirroring and then I go to put it onto the actual fabric and realize that it is the wrong way and I have to come back and make another one. So always remember to mirror. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out now. All right, I've gone ahead and hit make it. It is connected to my Cricut Maker and now we need to find laser copy paper since that's what I'm gonna be using today. So I'm gonna click on browse all materials. I'm gonna type in copy and search for copy and you'll see down here at the very bottom we have laser copy paper. I'm gonna go ahead and click that. I'm actually gonna make that a favorite so that way it shows up whenever I am uh, starting a new cut and I won't have to come search for it every time. So I'm gonna click on laser copy paper and I'm gonna hit done. So my base material is laser copy paper. It tells me to load my black infusible ink. I actually don't have black. I'm gonna be using brown today, but I'm gonna put my infusible ink pen into clamp A. I have my fine point blade in clamp B and I'm gonna go ahead and load my mat and get it ready to go. I have my blinking arrows happening here on my Cricut, so I know it's time to insert my mat. I have my laser copy paper here on my light grip mat, the blue mat. I'm gonna go ahead and load that. Let it do its thing, and then I'm gonna grab my brown infusible ink pen, and I'm gonna insert it into clamp A, and close that down. I think it was in there, but I just wanna make sure that I got it all the way down. Yep, there it is. All right, so it is now ready to go ahead and start writing and drawing, and then it's going to cut everything out. Okay, I've gathered my materials for actually putting this onto my fabric. Remember earlier when I talked about um, using the six and a half inch uh, square, this is why I use that six and a half inch square uh, because I have the template that is that size. And again, for me, this makes the perfect template size for the labels. Uh, you'll notice that I uh, my material here is uh, a little short, but that's okay. This is only for demo purposes anyway, so no big deal. I'm using a very high polyester count material. The higher the polyester count, the better. If you try to do this with cottons, the ink will not infuse into that material, so make sure that you're using as high of a polyester count as you can find. That's gonna work the best. I'm also gonna be using some heat tape. This tape is it's the only tape that you can use with heat. Um, if you go on to Amazon, uh, you can find lots of different types of heat tape available, uh, but basically you're just gonna wanna make sure to use a heat press or heat resistant tape of some kind in order to tape down your piece of paper. I'm also going to use, you know, of course I have my label, then I have a piece of cardstock because I don't want the infusible ink to go through my material and stain or discolor my work surface. And then I also have a piece of butcher paper that I'm gonna be using on top of it to keep my 
press from getting any transfer onto it. I'm going to be using my Mini Easy Press today. This is the Cricut Easy Press Mini. I'm going to be using that one today since this is a smaller project, but any of the Easy Presses or Heat Presses from Cricut will work. And if you do have another Heat Press from another brand, that will work as well. Irons can work, but you really have to kind of check and see and experiment with your iron because all irons are different. So it's going to come out differently depending on what you are using. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take my label that we cut out on the Cricut. I'm going to get my material ready. Actually, I'm going to put it here. I'm just going to go ahead and put it straight onto my cardstock so that way whenever I'm taping it down I can just go ahead and tape it straight down onto my cardstock. So I'm putting my label face down and I'm going to use some of the heat resistant tape to go ahead and really attach it onto my fabric so that way it doesn't go anywhere. All right, I've attached everything down with some of that heat resistant tape. I have my piece of paper with the infusible ink on it face down on top of my material. I have that taped down onto my piece of cardstock so it doesn't bleed through to the surface underneath. I've gone onto the Cricut website and looked at the Cricut Easy Press heat guide to know how long I need to heat everything for. It really depends on your model of the Cricut Easy Press if you have that model, and you'll probably have to do some experimentation if you don't have an easy press, um, it shouldn't be too hard to figure out, but you'll probably need to experiment a little bit to figure out what works best for your machine. So next I'm going to take my piece of butcher paper and I'm going to go ahead and put it on top. The guide on the Cricut's website said that I needed to heat my design for 75 seconds and make sure to keep moving my Cricut Easy Press Mini around. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I have my I'm breaking everything. Sorry, my easy press was, the cord was stuck for a moment. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I can see through the butcher paper where my design is. So I'm just gonna take my easy press and I'm just gonna go ahead and do circles over my design. And I'm just gonna keep heating it for about 75 seconds. Okay, that was roughly about 75 seconds. I'm gonna go ahead and take off. I don't know if you'll be able to see it on the camera, but I can see there is basically a uh, negative copy of my infusible ink on the butcher paper. That's why it's always important to make sure to put the butcher paper on top. Don't use freezer paper, use butcher paper. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and peel this up and we're gonna take a look and see Perfect, that came out great. So now my material has all the text that I wanted on it and it will be perfect for, you just fold this part over just like that and like put a little press in there and then I would sew this into the corner of my quilt whenever I put the binding on.